So, Freddie, thank you for joining us. Um, having watched the documentary, uh, I'm really keen to go now. It looks fantastically good. But for anyone who is not familiar with Secret Garden Party, describe what it's about. Um, it's about having a very good time in a field. Um, I grew up when, you know, having a good time in a field was the be all and end all. Um, there wasn't a lot of um, band music. It was all DJs. Um, and gradually, as I've grown up, more and more amazing bands have come to the forefront. And so we've combined the two. It's, uh, it's basically as much fun as you can have in a field with whilst remaining within the laws of this land. So the documentary covers uh, some quite extraordinary things that have gone on over that first sort of 15 years. Um, from your uh, experience, having been the head gardener, what is the most uh, extraordinary or bizarre memories that you have of acts or you know, events that have happened at, at day? God, this is always a hard one to remember. I should have a stock answer for this, but I mean, they range from the sort of the terrifying to the ridiculous. The first year, um, our head of licensing came down at the end of the party and said, how did it go? Is it all great? And as I'm talking to him, and you sort of silly need to know that the, the prequel to this story, which is I'd been speaking to my stage manager and they'd asked me the same question, how's the weekend been? I said, it's great, but you know, generally it's not a good party until someone's naked running around, you know, sort of going, woo! Anyway, I'm having the same conversation with head of licensing at the end of this. And as he's asking me this question, my stage manager runs around me, start bollock naked, going, woo! Um, <laughs> So that was, I suppose, sublime and ridiculous. I mean, the probably the moment I remember for, for the rest of my life outside of having to make the closing speech in 2017 was having to take Grace Jones off stage before she played Pull Up to the Bumper um, because her t our production team had taken us so long to get her on site. And we've got strict licensing laws. We've got locals, we've got neighbors who we don't like to annoy. Um, and so, you know, this was the, you know, our a hard stop is a hard stop. Anyway, that was, um, that was the most petrifying thing I've ever had to do, but was also, I have to say, one of the most professional artists I've ever dealt with. Um, there was, you know, you'd, you, you, you'd think that was the scariest thing you'd ever have to do. And you might be about to be sort of decked by a seven foot Jamaican woman. Um, but no, um quite the contrary she just yeah she said absolutely fine and off she went um so well the life is full of surprises well the documentary does allude to um health and safety uh, issues and it looks such a mad festival that it seems to be like a magnet for the health and safety executive is that the case um look i mean health and safety is about making sure people don't get hurt um and it's making sure that what you're doing you're doing in the safest possible manner um they aren't the killjoys that you think they are and what's been really fun about learning that with the garden party is realizing what we are allowed to encourage our guests to get up to where they feel that actually they're doing something that's really a little bit outlaw and a little bit sort of you know risque and actually is as safe as you know any soft play center in you know in the center of town that you can come up with um you know our what we do is try and make it seem a little bit dangerous and seem like you're you know doing something you shouldn't be doing because there's a little bit of fun in that what has been the event then that has uh, or, uh, that has been maybe got to that level that it's kind of got a little bit dangerous you thought oh this was not a good idea um some of our earlier uh, adventures in pyrotechnics probably fitted that <laughs> um there was definitely one of our opening ceremonies that almost started off with um about eight people losing their eyebrows due to heat singeing. Um, but um, yeah, so, I mean, you know, I think we've been, I think we've been lucky in terms of 
um, not just the bullets that we've dodged by magic, but actually been, we've been lucky by the people that we've been involved with who've spotted some of the bullets coming our way before we had to dodge them. So, um, I, yeah, I think we've, yeah, we, we, we've been very fortunate to tread the line between the sort of the outlaw, the renegade and the responsible. So there's been um, uh, a few things in, in the documentary which caught my eye. Um, one of them was uh, uh, the mud bath, the guys who came up with the mud bath idea, uh, which seems uh, was, it's hilarious. But I'm just wondering when you've been approached by outside uh, uh, people with such events, have, there, have you had ones which you've kind of thought, no, we can't really be doing that? Um, I'm trying to think of it. Well, we try and, I mean, you know, my, my default is yes. And this is how we've ended up running the garden party. Um, you know, those people who started off doing a mud bath um, and, you know, it literally was that. They dug a hole, they, you know, hosed it down and people went at each other in the mud. They're now doing interactive activations for Google. I mean, we can't afford these guys to come and do an area at our event anymore. That's how amazingly successful and wonderful they are. So, um, no, I, there's, there's been no one we've sort of gone, ooh, no, that's too much. And there was an element where, you know, because the, the, a lot of these come via application. Um, and um, there are times when the application, if it looks like you're holding a crayon in your fist for your application, generally <laughs> that, that goes to the bottom <laughs> of the pile. Um, so on a serious note then, um, the Secret Garden Party came to an end in 2017. Uh, and you do sort of allude to there were a number of reasons uh, for that. But was there, uh, what was the first moment when you thought it is now time to call it an, an end at that point? Um, I suppose well, we could be, you know, very candidly honest now, five years on. We thought that the year we started in 2017, we thought it was going to be a great year. We'd had a lovely summer the year before. We'd had a vintage garden party. Everything looked beautiful. The audience had a wonderful time. And so we thought we'd, um, we'd, go, we'd take a bit of a risk with our theme. And so our theme that year was about the corrosive nature of social media, in particularly, am I having fun if no one else can see me? you know, if the tree falls in the forest, does anyone hear it kind of stuff. Um, anyway, we, we had really good fun with this theme. In fact, we won an award for how good our theme was, if our marketing theme was. However, whilst the industry thought that was the case, our audience didn't. And 50% of our audience that we could see on socials um, who went, yes, this is fucking amazing. This is really good satire. The other 50% went, oh my God, who the hell do you think you are? You've sold out 100%. And that was our moment where we went, you know, if people don't know who we are and where we, what we stand for, you know, when you're choosing a choice between, am I going to Latitude, Isle of Wight, Garden Party, Kendall Calling, whatever. If you don't know the different values that those events represent, which is what we all think, I think, and I speak for all the other festival organizers, we all think that's what you make your choice on it, not just on the lineup. Then what the hell are we selling other than our lineup? And that was a real, that was a really sort of sobering moment. And it was at the moment of realizing that we'd sort of we'd lost this connect that um I sort of flippantly said in a meeting, well, if I told them it was the last one, I bet they'd all buy tickets. And we suddenly all going, oh God. It's that moment, isn't it? This is, this is, you know, this, this is, if you're ever going to go out on a high, this is the moment. Yeah. It's the perfect theme and it will sell it out. And, you know, and it did and it did. Um, and, you know, we genuinely didn't have any plans to come back with this at all. Um, but then I don't think anyone genuinely had any plans to have a global lockdown um, to start wars, multiple wars, 
um, to leave communities and all the rest that, you know, all these events that are going to be taught in schoolrooms for hundreds of years from now, not just to our children's children. Like, you know, we've lived through three or four world events that will be part of curriculums to come. I think to, to stop doing a party like ours on for the reasons we did, they suddenly in context that didn't stack up anymore. Um, you know, we thought actually we could do with a party. And so we put a toe in the water. We asked you all, we sent out registration, you know, notes. If you're interested, do sign up. And the overwhelming answer came back was a big yes. So thank you, because that is a, it is a huge honor to do this event. And I think that's really the crux of my point over your question is that it was to realize, to, to realize that you have the liberty to make a decision to end a party like this. Um, when you realize what a privilege that is in context of everything that's happened in the last five years, it, you know, it really pulls things into focus. And so, yeah, we're back because um, so the world's a better place with us. With, with that in mind, then, are we back to it being an annual event? Um, uh, I mean, who can tell? It all depends whether, you know, it's, you know, your, your garden needs you. Register for tickets now and we'll be back next year. All of that business. <laughs> well, finally, Freddie, thank you for your time. But my final question is, um, you got any spare tickets left? Um, no, we're sold out. We've, you know <laughs> what? I mean, this is, it, it's, and it's been the most flattering, humbling experiences having, you know, felt that we were, you know, I've ended because we were felt we were slogging up a hill to have sold out so quickly to have such an overwhelming support for bringing this back has been deeply uh, humbling and a real honor. And so we're so lucky to be doing this, but no, there's no tickets left. <laughs> They're gone. Um, but there are tickets left for next year. Um, if you want a super Q jumper guaranteed chance to buy a ticket, then indulge your FOMO by renting um, VOD, uh, the film, over the weekend. And that will come with a little capture that will give us your email address and you will get a queue jump chance to buy a pair of tickets above everyone else. So none of that waking up early in the morning, having to join a queue or anything. So if you're really, you know, if you missed out this year, you've got chances next year and you get to indulge your FOMO by looking at um, Dylan Harvey's wonderful documentary about us. I've been fortunate, as you're aware, Freddie, to have seen it. I really enjoyed it. It's such a, a joyful, happy documentary. Uh, and I wish you every success with, uh, with when it starts again now in a couple of days. Thanks for your time, Freddie. Thank you very much indeed, Simon. And um, yeah, look forward to seeing you. <laughs>